how's it going? We're gonna be talking about out of bounds and video games today. Are you excited? You should be. It's a pretty exciting topic. Been doing this for about seven to eight years now, and it's a really interesting thing that got a really interesting start. I started a series called Boundary Break, and out of bounds content on YouTube explodes from then on. You will find all sorts of different channels now covering out of bounds content for multitudes of different games. And why has this become such a phenomenon? Why do so many people care? And why is it something that you can consistently watch again and again and again and still find yourself fascinated by a very simple core concept? Well, it all stems back to us. We, as human beings, love exploration. Think about our entire history, our legacy. All of us always goes everywhere trying to get underneath the ocean, into space, cross countries, all in the interest of knowing what's out there, finding out if there's anything interesting, solving mysteries, figuring out life itself. It can be really fun, it can be really fascinating, and it can be really educational. And all that extends itself to the immersive world that we have in video games. By going out of bounds in video games, you might find something you never expect to see. Something the developers may have left behind. Like for example, in Mario Kart Double Dash, there is a giant heart that is stored outside of the Sky Dome. My guess is that it's not textured properly or there's some sort of effect that's not working right and due to crunch time they just decide to move the entire object out of bounds and leave all the ones that do seem to work in bounds. It's kind of cool though that at the end of the day there's this heart that can't be found anywhere else in Mario Kart Double Dash and that's just one of many 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 examples of breaking the boundaries, going outside places you're not supposed to, or seeing behind things you're not supposed to. And what do I mean by seeing things you're not supposed to? Well, if everything's expertly framed, uh, you know, everything you see here is exactly as I intend you to see it. But if I was to take this stupid yak plate that my significant other placed in my office, uh, what do we see on the back of this? Is it something interesting? Is it something new? Is it something you didn't know prior to me turning this plate around? Well, you get to find out, sadly, that uh, I can't focus this image, but I can tell you that it is $10.99 and it is from the Spring Shop. There you go. And it has a barcode on the back. Very fascinating stuff. That's not fascinating. But the point is, is that in video games, that has the same effect. Like, for example, in Punch Out for Wii, Piston Hondo holding that manga has Sailor Moon panels hidden inside. That's something that is right there in front of the player's face, but the angle isn't quite right enough to show you content that is not properly licensed to Nintendo. That's something that like you would never in your life imagine to see, especially these days. Developers have gotten a lot better about not putting content out of bounds, and it's just one of those things where it's so wild that you can't do that within the means of the game. I'm surprised that developers haven't embraced this way further back and offered this sort of tool as something that as an unlockable, like when they were doing big head mode or paintball mode, how have we not gotten here yet? It's so funny to me. But there's also developers in the indie scene that are suddenly embracing this content that we see on YouTube and doing things that we've never really seen before, which is offer a free camera as an unlockable to their games to enhance the content, to essentially give you that behind the scenes featurette. It's so cool how much has changed in just a small seven to eight years. It's wild stuff. And seriously, why not embrace it? Some of the things that are just the most interesting to us is to get to the places that we're not supposed to go. I mean, like that freaking castle in Wii Golf of all things. Like, you can't get anywhere close to it, but there's a castle out there. How would you not give us an opportunity to get up to that castle and see what's going on with it? It's like prime real estate for a show like Boundary Break or other channels that cover this sort of content. Even if it is there, we still want to see that castle up close just to see the details. Is there a door? Is there windows? Is there a little man inside? We gotta know. And so all of a sudden, you create a void, an avenue for people to want to seek this out, to just get those answers. And sometimes the answers aren't even that exciting. I know that there was a huge mystery surrounding missing number in Pokemon X and Y. There was like a shadow inside of a door frame and people wanted to know if it was an intentional reference. And by taking the camera through that door frame, we found out that no, it wasn't intentional. It was just a graphical glitch. But 
It's cool because stuff like that creates mysteries, mysteries that people want to solve. And people go to far, far lengths in order to solve it. That's why everything stems back to Silent Hill 2. That game is just riddled with mysteries. And so people way back then had to know and had to create something just to look for themselves. Which to me is the most passionate thing about going out of bounds. Now, don't get me wrong, not everybody loves going out of bounds. I know that a lot of people have stated their opinions on how it feels when they see a camera move out of bounds. The idea of the environment slinking further and further away and being surrounded more and more by the void. It gives them an uneasy feeling, one that doesn't entertain them anymore. It scares them. It gives them a sense that they need to stop watching, which is so freaking cool. I mean, it's not great for someone like me who peddles this stuff, but it's still at the end of the day, it is cool from a psychological standpoint. Video games are so immersive that there are people that get the sense of dread moving away from a game world. That is a person who is so in that game that when they see that on a YouTube screen, they panic. That to me is the magic of video games. And again, you know, not all of us feel that way. Some of us love looking out that window when we take off on an airplane and go someplace. We love seeing the buildings and the cars and everything shrink more and more as we get higher and higher into the sky. And that feeling carries over into video games as well when we look at an entire environment in one shot. And honestly, one of the craziest things of all is that looking at games out of bounds not only reveals little artifacts that maybe the developer left behind, but over time we, we as a gaming community have learned a lot of things that were usually information that was relegated to solely game developers. Things like frustrum culling, T-poses, LODs. These are all things that we weren't really having conversations about, I would say about eight years ago, unless you were neck deep in game development. I will be completely honest, I had no idea what any of these things were prior to doing Boundary Break. I was so stupid back then, and you know what? I'm stupid now, but I am learning as we are going. And it's fun to think about how looking at a video game out of bounds essentially opens a Pandora's box. It is so freaking cool. It's just awesome at the end of the day that you kind of go into this with one expectation. You want to see the untextured Hyrule Marketplace in Ocarina of Time. That's fascinating. That's striking. That tells you something immediately without you having to know anything ahead of time. But then as you go through all the Nintendo games, you ask yourself, why does Mario look so crappy from far away? Like when he moves around, his face gets all scrunched up and weird looking. Why is that? Why would they do that? Let's ask that question. Let's get answers. And suddenly we have a whole amalgamation of different things that will fascinate us by going out of bounds. It's no longer just questions like, why is there this weird book inside of the Noki bottle in Super Mario Sunshine? Now we're asking questions like, why does Solid Snake have two sets of teeth? in Super Smash Brothers Brawl when you take the camera inside of his face. We got to know the answer to these questions. It's important. Life's it's it's so it's not important. <laughs> it's but it's fun. It's entertaining and you do learn a lot of things along the way. It might even inspire you to get in the game development, you know? It, I have been told that there are game developers out there that were inspired by shows like Did You Know Gaming and stuff like this, stuff that you'll see on this channel. But to wind down this video and just sort of summarize why I even made this thing in the first place, it's just shocking to me how niche it must have been to be an explorer of Out of Bounds content 10 years ago. If it was something that had no interest on YouTube whatsoever, I imagine there are still a select few of you out there who had an AR cheat code or something and just took the camera anywhere in something like Okage on PlayStation 2. Look it up. There is a debug camera that you can get via AR cheat codes. Pretty cool stuff. But I guarantee somebody took the time to play that and look at stuff and they probably found something that we haven't even talked about yet something that hasn't even been documented on the internet yet. It's kind of interesting to think about, and it's just kind of fun and sort of eye-opening to take a step back and realize that something like this only gets any traction whatsoever because it, it resonates with nearly all people. Most of us are explorers, especially those of us who love video games. So, for the term boundary breaking, or the more commonly used term across all these different YouTube pages, uh, out of bounds content. 
uh, for all that to just explode the way that it has been, it's just wild to think about that it all started with just a small group of hardcore gamers that are just so interested in seeing Out of Bounds that they, they did like a cheat code or something like that. Or in the case of the Dolphin developers, made a universal tool for it to work with nearly every single game because they themselves clearly had an interest in Out of Bounds content. All right. Well, anyways, this is a very different video for this channel. If you liked it, please let me know. If you didn't like it, please let me know. I think I'm gonna be doing more of these types of videos on my third channel, which I'm gonna have in the video description down below and the pinned comment. This is edited by Bloops, so thank you Bloops. He's a fantastic guy, I hope it came out well. And yeah, if this somehow super explodes though, maybe I'll do more videos like this on the main channel. Either way, just wanted to share this with all of you guys because this is a topic that obviously goes hand in hand with my Boundary Break audience and I just wanted to share it with you. All right, take care.